Hello everyone! Welcome to the fifth lecture of Archline XP 2022 preliminary course. During this workshop, we will look at how to create documentation for clients or professionals from an already completed project in Archline XP. I open the program and load the reception room project from the first class. We will work in this and first make a mood board. Let's look at an example. We are going to create a mood board similar to this one and we can do that by going to Documentation, Mood Board, Create Mood Board. First, let's prepare our plot layout. We need to set the format which is A3 landscape orientation and how many of them we want to create. I set one column and one row which will contain one piece of plot layout and turn off the placement of the plot stamp because I don't need it now. OK to accept the settings. We have our plot layout. The next step is to place the images, which can be done in two ways. The first method is Documentation Mood Board Raster Image, where I can browse to the folder containing the images, then select the one I need. In the dialog, I can set the properties of the image, its layer or its size, but I can change these later. I accept the settings. The image will appear with an orange outline above the mood board. I click anywhere on the sheet to place it, then move the cursor to determine the other point of the rectangle and click to place it. If I rewrite the X dimension to 100 mm, while keeping the aspect ratio, the image will be modified accordingly. Clicking on one of its reference points, it also can be scaled proportionally using the scale option or distorted using the stretch option. I undo the last step. Let's place the other pictures with the other method. I display the program and the folder containing the images in multi-window mode. I maximize the plot layout view and then simply drag the desired images from the folder. I will adjust the size and the parameters of the images afterwards. So it's OK if they are not placed in the right place or in a correct size. Let's go back to the program and sort them out. We can rotate, move, scale and crop the images. I would use the part of this picture with the color samples. By clicking on the reference point and choosing the crop command, I adjust the orange rectangle to the required size. Press Enter to close the command. The next option is to flip images. From the local menu, Edit Flip, you can flip it horizontally or vertically. This sofa image should be flipped horizontally. I then adjust the order of the images so that the middle image is not covered by the other. I right click on the image. Then from the pop-up menu, I select Draw Order to Front. I also set the order for the other pictures. In the next step, I place one of the materials already used in the project on the mood board. In the Design Center Materials category, in the Project folder, I select the material I want to use. I place it on the Montage as a raster image using the drag and drop method. In the Properties menu, I resize it to 40 mm while keeping the aspect ratio. We work one to one on the plan, so what is 40 mm here will be 40 mm in reality. I place another texture, BB Orange, as a raster image. I'm going to touch the endpoint of the previous texture that is going to bring up the guidelines that I can use to position the image exactly. Now let's put some colors in place. There are two ways to do this with the drafting tools. First, I draw a 40 by 40 rectangle, then I use drafting, hatch command, or click on the pencil icon in the local menu of the square to set the hatching. In hatching, I select solid option, and then select the color. I select RAL 1001 beige from the RAL range, then click OK to close both windows. The color sample is now ready.
Let's include one more color. I make a copy of the rectangle. Then in the Properties menu, I set the Solid option and select Sand Yellow. In the following, I will place a text on the plot layout, which I can do by using the drafting text command. In the pop-up dialog, I will type the text I want to place, example, mood board. I turn off the option to insert repeated text and place it on the plan. I reduce the text size in the properties tab to 10 mm. Place it in the middle, then change the color to beige. We have the mood board ready. Let's print it. I choose documentation, print, print to PDF to set the parameters. I select the folder and enter the file name mood board. I set the paper size, which is A3, and change the orientation to landscape. I set the scale factor to 1 to 1 and select the option Center the plot. I accept the settings with the apply button and print with OK. Let's take a 3D snapshot. I close the PDF and activate a 3D window. Using documentation snapshot, snapshot 3D view command, I create the snapshot. In the pop-up window, I set the resolution and the format I want to save the image in. The resolution should be 2560 pixels. The format should remain PNG. With clicking OK, I can place the image on the floor plan, but will create an image file. So I click Save to name it 3D View and specify where I want to save it. It's done. Let's have a look. Now let's create an architectural floor plan. To do this, I activate the floor plan view. First, I'll check the layer manager which layers I need to create it. We can see the current layer of an object in the Properties tab after selecting it. The sofa, for example, is on the interior living room furniture layer. Here I can move it to another one if I want to. I open the layer manager from the status bar. In the dialog, I can toggle the layers I'm using on and off. If the bulb icon is turned off, the elements on the layer will not appear on the floor plan or in the 3D view after rebuilding it. By closing the lock, we can turn off their modifiability. Let's turn off all layers, starting with interior by making the bulb icon inactive and accept the setting with OK. The objects have disappeared from the floor plan, but not from the 3D view. This is solved by a quick 3D rebuild. I go back to the floor plan and start dimensioning the architectural floor plan. I select the dimension, building all walls command. In the dialog that appears, I can choose from different dimension options. The currently selected option is highlighted in red in the preview. Let's look at this in a little more detail. The first option displays the interior wall dimensions and the width of the walls. The next option shows the width of the openings in addition to the interior dimensions. The third option is to display interior wall dimensions and opening axis distances. The next is exterior walls and the width of doors and windows, then external walls with openings axis distances, external walls with corner points. The next one is to display exterior overall dimensions and finally to display the seals. Now I need three dimensions. The interior wall dimensions with opening width, the interior wall dimensions and the exterior wall dimensions with corner points. Now let's look at the detailed dimension settings of the doors and windows. I select only the width value and uncheck the boxes width minus reveal and seal height. I'll set these afterwards in the global properties of the doors and windows. I accept the settings with OK, then select the whole floor plan, accept the selection with Enter, and place the dimensions using the orange rectangle. Let's see 
how we can modify them. I can move the whole top dimension group, but I can also change the position of a dimension line. Where the values have overlapped, I can move them one by one. The value can be moved freely or along the dimension line by clicking on the arrow next to it. Now let's dimension the openings. In the building properties, openings, doors or windows, I set the global properties. Let's start with the door. I click on the dimension consignment button. Here I set the width and the height option. I also turn off the width minus reveal. I hit OK to accept the changes. I set the properties for the window as well and enter the dimension style using the dimension consignment button. I keep the width and the height option and turn off the width minus reveal. I change the abbreviation of the steel height to SH. I accept the settings. Selecting dimension building window, all window will display the dimensions. I also place the dimensions for the doors. Here I can also change the position of them by clicking on the arrow. I can also use the building door selection command. If I click outside the building, it will be placed outside. If inside the building, the command will place it there. Now let's place 2D symbols on the floor plan. I start with the north symbol. First, I need to set the north direction on the status bar. Let it be 59 degree. From the side toolbar, design center, groups, signs, north English folder, I select the north 13th sign and drag and drop it on the floor plan. I press escape to exit the command. The sign has taken the north direction I just set. I resize it. I can do this in the properties tab, keeping the ratio, rewriting the width to 1000 mm, or by right clicking on it with the scale group option. By clicking on the pencil icon, I turn on the force color option, so the signal will be black. Now I will place the entrance sign from the design center, groups, arrows folder. I'll drag it onto the floor plan, but before I place it, I'll choose rotate from the commands on the right. I place it on the center point of the door and rotate it by 180 degree. I will add one more 2D symbol, the elevation. I click on dimension, elevation on floor plan, then select a wall and define its one point. Using the commands on the right, I can specify whether the elevation point is on the bottom or the top wall plane. Now I choose the bottom option. In the dialog box, I can change the initial height to 0.00. .00. I accept it and replace the symbol. Let's choose elevation 1. I click OK and place it on the floor plan. In the following, I will place a room stamp on the floor plan. I can do this using the building room and area command. If the room is surrounded by walls, I use the room by walls command. If the room is not surrounded by walls, for example, a balcony or terrace, I select the room with polygon function. As I'm working with a room with walls, I will go for the first option. I click into the room where I want to place the stamp. It's done. I use escape to exit the command and then change the text to living room. I also change the other properties of the stamp by clicking on the pencil icon. On the calculated values tab, I change the floor finish to pocket. On the Properties tab, I can also change the text style. Since the list not contains the one I want to use, I need to create a new text style. I choose the Drafting menu Properties Text command. Clicking on the font list will display all the fonts in the program. I look for Verdana and rewrite the font size to 250 mm. 
I click on the gear icon and save it as a new style called Verdana 220 and choose to be available in all projects. I accept the settings with OK. I open the properties of the room stamp again and select the Verdana 250 textile I just created. The room stamp is modified. However, this room has different functions, so two types of room stamp must be placed. I can do this by using the building room and area, room separation line command, to create a pseudo wall between the functions. Starting from the end point of the door, I draw a line perpendicular to the opposite wall. Press Enter to close the command. The second room stamp appears. I move it and rewrite the text to Dining Room. As I have been working on the project without saving for a while, I save it. I use File, Save Project S to create my own version. Let's continue editing. I place another text using the Drafting text tool. Let it be Architectural Plan. Now it's ready to print. I'm not going to make a plot layout. I'm going to print from here, from the floor plan view. So I select File, Print, Print to PDF and set its properties. I select A3 landscape and set the scale to 1 to 50. I center the drawing. Finally, I specify the save location and the file name, which should be architectural plan. Let's see how it turned out. In the next step, I will create a furnished floor plan. I open the layer manager because to do this I need to turn off dimension layers and turn on interior ones. First, I save the current settings as new variations so that I can choose from them more easily later. Let's call it Architect. I click on all layers then turn off the dimension and the group layer. In the floor plan, I see that the room stamp and the text are still visible, so I return to the layer manager. Since the text is currently the active layer, I can't turn it off. To do this, I first make the wall layer active by clicking the active layer button. Now I can turn off the visibility of the text. I also save this variation by clicking on the plus icon under the name Furnished. I still have to turn off the room layer and use the update variation button to update the layer variation I just saved. Let's take the floor snapshot. I use the documentation snapshot create or delete floor snapshot command. I can set the resolution of the image and the cutting elevation. It is recommended to set it to a height where the openings will be visible in the image. 1500 mm is the idle cutting elevation, so I accept the settings. The snapshot has been taken, but the furniture is missing. It is true that the layers were switched back on, but I did not rebuild the 3D model before taking the picture. Let's do this with the quick 3D model command. The furniture has appeared, so I refresh the snapshot using the snapshot refresh floor snapshot option. I move the image from the floor plan. Now I'll show you how we can adjust the order of the objects in the floor plan so that they don't intersect but are positioned as they are in the snapshot. I select the chairs and in the properties I enable 2D fields. I pick a color, this greenish shade. I continue with the carpet and color it to grey. Finally, I select the table, enable 2D fields and choose its color. We see that they are not in the right order. I select the carpet and set it to the bottommost draw order, then the table to the uppermost. 
I select the chairs, then move them to the middle position in the third one. Now we can see how the objects are positioned on top of each other. In the following, I will create wall views. Let's look at the settings first. We always need to set which representation mode we want to use for the wall view. It can be a vector drawing or an image. Now I will create an image wall view with realistic with edges visual style. I turn off the cabinet dimensions option. I can also modify the floor plan symbol. I accept the setting and then use the documentation, wall view, single wall view command to select the wall and specify the distance with the orange arrow. I can also change the width of the wall view with the offset command. I return to the original and close the command with enter. The wall view is done. I place it on the floor plan. I create another view, a vector drawing wall view with hidden line style. Using the single wall view command, I create the view of the opposite wall. I will dimension this wall view using the dimension serial in horizontal command. I will click on the left edge of the wall view, then click on the first point I want to dimension and place the dimension. From here, I just click through on each point I want to dimension. In the next step, I use the elevation on section command. I specify the zero initial height, then select the additional points as before. I can also modify this by clicking on the pencil icon. I choose a flipped arrowhead sign and set the text to be below the arrowhead. This way the dimension is flipped and it doesn't overlap the other. I move the 2.40 value along the line. Now let's create a tag. I can find this under Documentation, Tags, Create Tags. From the list, I select Interior. I create a tag for an object. I set the parameters I want to display on the tag. I already have the ID, object name, width, height. I select the depth from the left side and move it to the right side. Here I can edit the label parameters. So I enter the prefix for depth. It is D. I apply it, then accept it with OK. I select text, place text. I accept the previous settings. I set the cell textile to Arial 200 and close the window with OK. I click on the sofa and place the label. The label and the object are connected with a line, indicating that the two elements are linked together. I can delete it. The link will remain between them. If the object changes, the tag too. For example, if I rewrite the width of the sofa to 1800 mm and update the tag by right-clicking on it, Update Tag, it will show the modified value. Let's prepare a plot layout. To do this, I choose Documentation, Plot Layout, Prepare a plot layout. I set A3 form and landscape orientation, as well as how many pieces I want to place. Let's say 6. I will arrange this in three columns and two rows. I activate the plot stamp option and select English 1 horizontal. The sheet with six layout is ready. First, I copy the furnished plan. I go back to the floor plan and only turn on the furnished layer. I switch to the plot layout. Then from the project navigator, I drag the floor plan into the layout. I'm going to set the scale factor to 1 to 50. Now comes the placement of the architectural plan. I switch to the floor plan and select the architectural layer. A few unnecessary elements are left on the plan. I move the floor snapshot to another layer. 
I will cut out the wall view dimensions on the layout. I switch to the plot layout view and drag the ground floor into the next sheet. After placement, by clicking on the blue rectangle, I use the offset command to cut off unnecessary dimensions. The tag of the sofa remained on the plan. I go back to the floor plan, click on it and change its layer to Interior Living Room Furniture. Returning to the plot layout, I update the architectural plan by right-clicking Refresh this. Let's fill the plot stamp. The easiest way to do this is to fill the project properties in the file BIM Project Parameters. When I open a new project, the program will offer this. If we have not filled it in, we can do it here afterwards. Let the project name be Living Room, the project version number V1, the building address Budapest, the client name Cadline and the architect name Architect. The creation date is set today's date. I accept the settings. If the stamp is not updated, we can do this under Documentation, Plot Layout, Update Project Parameters. The print stamp has been updated on all sheets. I can fill in the rest of the information in two ways. One is, if I click on the seal, I can enter furnished under drawing name, 01 for the sheet number, and 1 to 50 for the scale. The other option is, the plot layout, fill and modify title box command. I click on the seal, and I can add the data in the pop-up window. Let's type in for the drawing furnished, the scale 1 to 50, and the sheet number is 1. Now I'll place the wall views on this sheet. I go back to the floor plan and show you another way to place them. I display all layers to see the wall views and move them to make them easier to work with. I select the plot layout. Copy part to plot layout by rectangle function. I select the part I want to copy. Then go back to the plot layout and use plot layout, paste to the plot layout command and select 1 to 25 scale factor. Placing it, I see that it doesn't fit. I can delete and replace it with different scale factor or use the pencil icon to enter its properties and change the scale to 1 to 50. I accept it and move the wall views to the center of the page. Now I create a new plot layout by clicking on the plot layout, prepare plot layout and set that I only want to add one more sheet now. I have to choose whether to place the second plot layout on the same page or another window. If I click on no button, I place it on the same page. The seventh sheet will appear, which I can either move or simply delete. Now I'm printing out the existing sheets using a new method. It can be used when we want to print all the sheets merged together in one PDF. In this case, I select the print, print queue, and click on the green plus to select the page, which will then display all the prepared sheets. Here I also need to set the print properties. A3, landscape format, 1 to 1 scale factor and center the plot. I enter its name. Let it be living room. Clicking on the apply will create the print queue. I look through what has been added to it. I can also change the order. I can also customize the print properties of the sheets one by one. Since the last three sheets have nothing on them, I am taking them out of the printout. Clicking print will create a PDF that I can scroll through. Finally, let's create our own plot stamp. I drew this first using the drafting tools. I draw a rectangle in which I will place the parameters. Make it 
30 mm by 165 mm. I divide the rectangle with lines. I draw the first line 15 mm from the button by choosing Edit, Duplicate and clicking on the Repeat command on the right side. I make 10 copies. I specify the bottom point, then the end point of the first line. The lines are done. I resize the rectangle so the top cell is 30 by 30 mm. I also create auxiliary lines. One in the middle and one on the left side. I choose Plan Plot, Create Plot Stamp, Variables. First I need to select parameters that I will place in the print stamp. These should be project name, project version number, project address, the name of the client, the architect name and the creation date. I need to specify the text height. It should be 2 mm. I will place the parameters. First I place the project name text, then the variable. I will extract from the project parameters, then the project version number text and its variable, the building address text and the corresponding variable, and so on. I will choose to display the value of the parameters in the pop-up menu. Next I will place custom data with the text command. The first is drawing name. I choose the option to insert the text and repeat it before placing it. Next should be the scale, then page, finally the drawing face. Now we'll place the variables. These are always entered without accents or spaces. So the first one is the drawing name, which I'll place under the title. The second one is the scale, then the page, and finally the drawing face. Let's convert them into variables. I right-click and select the option Convert to Text to Variables. Finally, I will add a logo. To do this, I open the folder and drag the logo in. I change the stamp a bit more. I'll delete the time from the date, replace the creation date with date, in date and delete the auxiliary lines. I save it as a new plot stamp. I place the plan layout, create plot stamp, new plot stamp and select the entire table. Then set the two bottom corners as the reference points. I press Enter to accept it, then I save it to the library under the name of Plot in the printing category, the English subcategory. Let's see how we can replace the stamp on the sheets. I simply delete the old one and in the Design Center I select Printing, English category. I look for the created stamp and drag it onto the sheet. By choosing the next reference point, I can place it in the margin with its bottom right corner. And that's it. We can fill it in in the same way as we did it with the previous one. If I click on Plot Layout Fill Modify Title Box, I can enter the relevant data. For example, the scale is 1 to 50, the page is 1, and the name of the drawing should be Plan. Of course, I can also click on the variable to fill it in. For example, I type plan for the drawing face. I will also show you how to place custom stamp on a new print layout. I will create a new plot layout. I browse a print stamp by clicking on the plus icon. I look for the plot stamp I made and select it. I click OK to accept it and choose Yes in the pop-up window. This will create a sheet on a completely new page with a filled stamp on it. This brings us to the end of the documentation workshop. Practice the documentation creation until the next workshop. I hope you found this video informative. Have a great day. Bye-bye.